Yeah, welcome back. This is Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel, and we're talking about community matters this morning with uh, Alan Oshima, uh, the just retired CEO and president of Hawaiian Electric. Uh, thanks for coming down, Alan. Thanks, Jay. Um, one correction: I'm still kind of around uh, with the company as an advisor post to the end of the year. Uh, Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. So that's that's wonderful. I'm I'm, I'm happy to hear you. You're going to keep out of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need to. I, I, a lot of people are trying to get me into bigger trouble, but <laughs> keep praying for me. Uh, yes, of course. Well, you know, first let's talk about, uh, you know, the news of the day. We always talk about this with everybody, so I'd like to talk about it with you. Sure. Uh, can you give us your thoughts, um, you know, your characterizations and expectations about the coronavirus and how it will affect our world and our economy? Well, you know, of course, it is affecting our world and our economy, and Hawaii is going to have a special place in that, given our real dependence on Asia and the West Coast, primarily for our tourist market. Um, so how that recovers and is going to make a big difference on our local economy, and it won't be rapid. So, you know, we have to really, really pay attention in Hawaii, I think, to all of the social services and our nonprofits who are going to be the safety net. And with the tax changes, um, you know, that kind of eliminated a lot of charitable donations and tax deductibility, the nonprofits were already kind of taxed, and now they're going to be even more so. So I'm really, really uh, concerned about that, as are a lot of people. And uh, I was really proud of our company, our charitable foundation. I just saw, um, you know, I used to head that, and A.J. Halagawa is running it, and uh, he just informed me that uh, our charitable foundation is going to be doing sizable donations to United Way on all of the islands and food banks. So, and there's going to be a need for more. Yeah, everybody's going to have to chip in. Well, as we were talking before the show, it's kind of a test. It's a test for, you know, the corporate world. It's a test for every individual. It's a test for small and medium businesses to see how they conduct themselves here in terms of protecting the staff, in terms of protecting the public such as they have contact with, and uh, in terms of you know, carrying on, not letting the economy dry up completely uh, yeah. under them. Um, great concerns on all those things, but I think, I think in Hawaii there's a certain sense of togetherness that maybe will help, and that people, companies, individuals will see um, you know, into the future and uh, figure out how they can positively, constructively collaborate and participate so as to ameliorate the problem. Yeah, yeah you know, I, in a strange way, I'm, I'm way off the charts as an optimist. Uh, so I always try to find some good and bad. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the country's, uh, the divisive nature of our politics and how we treat one another, um, I think we're just really going to have to come to terms now and really do what we do in Hawaii. And everybody's got to hang together to solve a common enemy and solve the problems for everybody with equity. So I'm kind of seeing some of that. Uh, we'll see how long it lasts, but we need it. And we need it. Yeah, we need it. Well, let's talk about your, uh, your career. You started as a lawyer, um, got into, uh, I guess, regula regulated sectors, uh, and then you became an executive. And then one day you became the CEO and president of Hawaiian, Hawaiian Electric, and I'm, I'm wondering, you know, looking back down the trail, that's what the purpose of this discussion mm -hmm. is, really. Um, you know, how, how important was it that you have that legal experience beforehand? Uh, well, very important. Although I, I tell, I'll just be very honest, I told my kids, don't be a lawyer, uh, <laughs> <laughs> be a client. Uh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> as long as it's not in the criminal area. Uh, because lawyers work, as you know, Jay, I mean, we're both lawyers, and we work so hard um, and uh, really trying to solve problems and trying to get the clients to what they wa want to do in a legal way. And But, you know, the good thing about the law is that it teaches you a way of looking at problems and uh, really addressing the needs rather than just giving the law. So I used to tell my old law firm, the new associates, don't answer the client's questions uh, because they're asking the wrong questions. You have to understand what the client wants to do and needs to do 
And you have to chart out the questions, and you have to ask the questions, the proper questions, to get them there. So, yeah, being a lawyer helped me do the job that I think the board asked me to do at the company uh, at the time that we were facing. So, it helps. Uh, yeah, I'm reminded of uh, Stanford and design thinking. You know, they kind of discovered it maybe 10 years ago, but the lawyers knew before that. The lawyers knew that when the client walks in your office, um, you have to decide what the questions are. You have to, you know, consider the options and you have to make recommendations as to which option is the best and how you execute that yeah, option. Yeah, it's yeah. A basic design thinking. Exactly. And, and we knew about it a long time ago. Didn't exactly. We? <laughs> and it's not just today's solution, but you have to be looking at short, medium and long term and it can you can face it. Right. So those are all the kinds of things that um, we're doing at Hawaii Electric. Um, and, you know, I, I think, um, yeah, being a lawyer helped me. Yeah. And, and going to Hastings helped you. And uh, was it a year ago or so you got this fabulous award uh, uh, from, uh, well, I guess it was from Hastings, huh? Yeah. And everybody came down to say hi. I really enjoyed being there. Well, you thank you, Jay. You know, the thing about that and is that Hastings used to be Hawaii's law school. Uh, it was the closest before Richardson opened, and there were uh, even forgiveness that you had in-state tuition at some points uh, for Hawaii kids. And so there's a payback to Hastings. There's a large uh, number of lawyers in Hawaii and in the judiciary who got their legal education at Hastings. And so this was give back time. So there's a scholarship fund for Hawaii law students at Hastings, and that, that uh, was used that dinner was used to raise funds for that. Uh, the previous dinner, Connie Law was um, honored and raised money. And we're gonna do a few more just to get, we're I think about $500,000 now in the Hastings Endowment for Hawaii students, and we wanna get it higher. Because you know, it's so expensive to go to law school now. Oh yeah. You know, when we were going, I mean, on the GI Bill, um, it was next to nothing. It seemed like a lot of the time, but in retrospect, it was peanuts. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, plus the cost of living is so high, right? Sure. Yeah. Well, you, you know, um, uh, I forget who made this statement recently is, um, you know, we don't have enough doctors, especially now in this uh, crisis. We have too many lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> if, if only the lawyers had gone to medical school, we'd be better off. <laughs> well, the, the ranks of the lawyers are kind of dwindling, right, as the market changed. And, oh, yeah. Um, but, you know, there's so many lawyers in town who don't practice law. Uh, you know, just True. you and I can name them who are in business or in the community organization. Successful. Mike so. Broderick runs the YMCA. I mean, yeah, you know, right. so the legal training has applicability in Everywhere. so many, so many areas. It's that design thinking. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, I, I, um, I just wanted to um, look through your, you know, your time at Hawaiian Electric. I remember we met and we did a think tech show. Um, just at the time you were appointed, and I was very gratified to be able to talk to you. And I'd like to sort of take stock of how it, how it looked to you at that time, um, what your vision of the job was going to be, um, and, then how, and then how it all proceeded. Mm -hmm. was, it, was it as you expected? You know, I had no expectations. I mean, that's part of the problem I have going through life. I'm not really a planner uh, for myself. Uh, so... I just wanted to be able to go in there and make a difference. And we were faced, as you know, right after I was appointed, the Nextera deal was announced. We had to see that through uh, its conclusion. Yeah. Um, we had to plan for either eventuality, approval or no, no approval. Yeah. Um, we were faced with the uh, really burgeoning market for rooftop solar. And the company wasn't quite equipped to be able to judge how much we could actually add to the system without downing the system. Uh, there was some science involved. So those were the two big hot items at that time. And um, through it all, I mean, so the next star deal took 20 months, 20 painful months uh, to uh, come to a conclusion. Uh, we had whole teams working with Nextera, with the PUC, with stakeholders. And then when it was denied, we were ready to go on our way. Um, so we were prepared for joining Nextera or transforming our company. So that's when the transformation really had to start. And so we reorganized. 
set our company up for new business opportunities per the PUC's directive, by the way. Mm -hmm. And we got better science through national labs and were able to uh, connect more rooftop solar safely, uh, improve our system so that people got informed about the status of their applications more uh, readily. Now it takes about two weeks and it's, a, it's an online process. So you know exactly where you are. You can't proceed unless you have all the information there. So there are a lot of changes that happened in a very, what seemed like a long period of time, but it was quite condensed. Well, some of them very challenging. I don't yeah. know how much uh, oxygen the next yeah. era deal sucked out of the room. Yeah. Uh, and it put a burden on the utility that was really, I, I think, unfair. I would have approved that deal myself. Um, I thought it was a good idea. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, there was so much noise over it. And, yeah. and uh, you guys had to address all these questions and hearings and yeah. process for 18 months. Yeah. Uh, that was, I'm sure that was hard on you. Um, but anyway, uh, you know, uh, the other thing I remember from our discussion that day was uh, that you intended to change the culture to some extent mm -hmm. within the company, mm -hmm. um, you know, to sort of um, uh, make it um, more collaborative, more customer oriented. Um, uh, you know, uh, uh, the same kind of thing we talked about a minute ago is mm -hmm. kind of the Aloha, the Aloha infusion yeah. into the company. Can you talk about your, expect, your expectations yeah. and how that evolved? Yeah, and, and that, by the way, I think the, the board had that expectation of, of me, given my community service kind of background and connecting various groups in the community. Uh, when I, you know, when you look at a 126 year old company um, that's primarily engineering, I just saw in the paper, was it today or yesterday, a picture of Ronald Reagan sitting in front of a room air conditioner with the then president of Hawaiian Electric, <laughs> 1959. Okay, it's like celebrating a room air conditioner uh, in 1959. Everybody's in a suit, right? Um, so what we had was a, a company that was truly a monopoly, uh, did things to support the state's economy um, based upon what was high tech at the time, you know, a room air conditioner. Um, since then, things progressed so quickly. And so customer expectations changed. Government expectations changed. The environment had to be addressed. So the company was under siege um, by all of the expectations. And so what the company had to do was change its culture and not be the 1959 culture, <laughs> but come up to date. And so that was the challenge. And I think, um, I think we were able to address that. And I'm really confident that um, our company is on the right track. Our Scott Sue and his team are really doing the right things, I think. And uh, there's more to do, you know, and, um, but it was building that trust among the executives, managers, and employees. And now we're now embarking on a code of excellence with our union, working together for the value of our customers and for the safety of our employees and seeking solutions together. Uh, and the theme is better together. So there's, there's, phases of how we transform um, and really trying to become more external, work together within the company, but for everyone to understand the vision of Hawaii. And we're so necessary to accomplish Hawaii's vision, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. that, was a, that was a quest and uh, it was kind of gratifying that we did as much as we did. We didn't do it all and there's still more to do. Yeah. But I, you know, uh, I was I was seeing that. I, I interviewed a lot of uh, people from Hawaiian Electric over the years, and I saw that evolving, um, and it was actually coming true, just as you had, um, you know, stated an expectation at the outset. So I, I could see that it was working, at least uh, from where I stood. Well, that's nice to hear. The other the other uh, interesting the point about is the technology changed while you were in yeah. office. Yeah. Uh, the first thing that comes to mind is LNG. Yeah. Uh, LNG um, was sweeping the country. We were all kinds of technological developments that minimized the damage to the environment uh, that, um, you know, that, that allowed us to move the gas uh, across the country and across the world. Um, and I, you know, I, I'm not sure what your internal decision was about it, but it seemed to me a good idea to do LNG because the world was doing it. It was a lot cheaper. It was a great bridge fuel, if you want to, you know, look at it in those ways. 
Um, and, and you got stopped short one day, at, uh, I guess it was an energy conference where uh, Governor Ige announced flat out that he didn't want that. And that had a tremendous dampening effect on it. And uh, I, I have always questioned whether that was the right thing to do. But that's just one example of all the technology that was moving around you, including all the solar technology, the wind turbine technology, the technology around geothermal, the technology, everything. So uh, that, I think that sort of was a major piece in your administration, wasn't it? You're, you're <laughs> Jay. <laughs> yes. Um, we spent millions of dollars trying to find a way to safely bring in LNG with the least damage to the environment to stabilize our bills, clean the air in Hawaii as a bridge fuel to 2045. Um, it was in our uh, PSIP uh, and uh, you know, the regime change here, change the circumstances. So, but it's just another example of how, um, you know, we are regulated, we are, have many masters, and we have to transform, and we just have to move on. So there's no sense in whining about it. We just have to find other solutions and uh, move on for the good of the state. Yeah. Well, you kind of anticipated one thing I wanted to ask you about, and that is, you know, the electric company is really sui generis. Uh, for the non-lawyers in our audience, that means in its own category. <laughs> and um, you know, the electric company is a, is a profit corporation. It's publicly held. And by the way, there's not many people you can find on Bishop Street who say that they have been CEO of a public corporation, a national, international right. public corporation. So that is something. I mean, I really wonder how you sleep at night when you're the CEO of, a, of an international public corporation. Well, I want to I make sure that HEI is the publicly traded stock and we're just a principal part of HEI. Okay. But yes, but Rich Wacker on the bank and I as subsidiaries, and, um, yeah, we, we worry about all of that <laughs> along with Connie, right? And the board. Right. Or, and Scott, no, no I, I don't worry anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, probably sleeping better. I am. <laughs> so, you know, but the thing is that you're a public corporation, you have a duty to shareholders, you have a duty to directors to you know, make a good return, you know, to do the right thing. At the same time, you have the public because, you, you know, yeah. you're selling a yeah. product to the public all day long. And this is real sensitive because this product affects our lives. Yeah. Every one of us all day long, we, yeah. we walk in and, and make this complacent, uh, you know, uh, assumption that the lights will be on. Right. And, and when they're not on, we have, we have yeah. a, a bad day. Um, and finally, um, you know, you have to deal with the regulators and the legislature. You're under the microscope all the time. Correct. And I think what it, you know, it shows is that this is an animal that is sui generis. This is very hard to navigate this. And I think the relationship, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the relationship over your administration changed and improved. From the time you started as a regulated company, subject to, you know, public mm -hmm. opinion and all mm -hmm. that, uh, till the time you ended, it seemed to me to improve. It seemed to me to be kinder, gentler, uh, better understood on both sides, all sides of the equation. Tell me I'm, I'm right. You are right. And it's not only due to our efforts, it's due to the PUC's recognition, DBED, governor, consumer advocate, all seeing the need that, you know, we say a lot now in our company and our stakeholder group um, in Hawaii, right? We're kako. We all have to work together to the common goal. And there's no, there's no denying that we're all seeking the same goal. And that's to be carbon neutral um, and making Hawaii sustainable. So there, we're, we're gonna have differences along the way as to what comes first and whether affordability is more important than um, technology. Um, but these are things we all have to work out together. And the relationship with the regulators and policymakers is so important. And Wall Street watches that. So we are a high, high capital intensive company. Our about 400 million a year in new infrastructure and re-upping re and refreshing and you know renewing. Um, that requires access to capital, equity, and debt um, at good rates. So we watched that. Tain Sikimura, our CFO, Greg Hazelton, the CFO of Hawaiian Electric Industries, um, watches that constantly. And so the tone of the group matters.
to investors. Are we all in this together and are we supportive of keeping the company whole, earning a fair return as required by law, but also serving customer interests and state policy? So that's the trick. And um, you're right, it started out rocky with the new administration, new PUC, um, but then we quickly came to terms because we realized we're all on the same page. So I can now have lunch with Randy Iwase and it's no longer uh, you know, accusatory on either side. And we can talk about common issues and common goals for the state. So it did improve. You're That's right. a beautiful thing. Uh, Alan, we're going to take a break, a short break. And in the break, we're going to play our list of underwriters. And full disclosure, one of the various underwriters on the screen will be Hawaiian Electric. All right, good. Which has supported <laughs> us in, uh, 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 over the years, and we are very appreciative. So let's take a break, and you'll see the list. Alan Oshima, he's here today with us here on Community Matters. This is Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. We're talking about a, a retrospective of Alan's uh, tenure as uh, the CEO and president of Hawaiian Electric. So, Alan, you know, one of the questions I wanted to ask you, and I, I do see you from time to time, uh, you know, our houses are not that far apart in our neighborhood, um, is, you know, how this has changed you. Uh, you know, it's, it's been a while. It's been mm -hmm. what, five years, is mm -hmm. it? Yeah, it's five pretty, plus, yeah. Yeah, a long, long time. Long, and, longer than any of us expected. <laughs> <laughs> Not me. <laughs> I, I knew it was a long term deal. <laughs> so, you know, the question is, uh, you go through this and it's like, um, you know, it's like having an experience every single day yeah. and watching all the balls in the air every single day, doing all these initiatives, watching all these you know, uh, uh, people expect expectations from so many people. So the question is, um, how has it changed you and how did it change you in some profound ways? Can we be introspective for a moment? Okay, sure. Can you help me with that? Um, I don't know that it changed me, Jack. I, 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 I've always been, I've, I wanted to be an architect. My high school counselor taught Funny thing, so did I. Oh, see? So did I. Hey, we have something in common. Exactly. <laughs> so, you know, I, I kind of like to visualize things and build it and see the outcome. Um, so I liken my job at Hawaii Electric, kind of satisfying that part of me, visualizing what it should be, and then using all the components to design and having a really great team to put it together. So... Um, that part was gratifying. Um, you're right, though, that the constant uh, pressure, uh, because it comes from so many sources, right? Um, legislature, administration, federal, uh, PUC, consumer advocate, customers, industry, technology, um, is wearing. It is wearing. So by this time, if I were in the office I held before, what is it, March? I would have been to the East Coast probably twice, to the West Coast several times. I have trips coming up, attend industry meetings, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Daily, my, my calendar would be from 7.30 till 7 p.m. So immediately after stepping down, I, I felt a great relief. <laughs> <laughs> um, noticeable change in how I can see the day now and uh, really uh, enjoy different aspects of my life. Yeah. So, yeah. But I, that, I, I don't know that I discovered anything. I, I just enjoyed the moment and I'm going to enjoy the next moment. That, that's, that sounds like a recap of your whole career. It was, a, it was from one thing to another like that. I, I imagine you had the same experience e each time. There have been several really yeah. interesting steps. And, and I'm glad you didn't tell me that it, it, it uh, changed, it changed uh, that it made your hair white. <laughs> because I know your hair was white before you ever started the job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Other things made my hair white. I think genetics has something to do with it too, and age. <laughs> 
So, so let's look forward for a minute. So uh, Scott Hsu inherits the post. Uh, he moves on right in the middle of the coronavirus, which has got to be, uh, you know, constricting in many ways for any company and including a company with as many obligations as, as yours. And so I guess the question is, what, you know, what, what is the condition of the company now as you leave it to him? And what are your expectations for how it will go forward uh, with your consultation, yeah. of course, as a consultant? Yeah. So it's in great shape. Still a lot of work to do. Things that we had planned to do, of course, got put on hold during next era, whatever. Um, we finally completed our one company initiative. And so we are working as one company across five islands. And Scott had a big part to play in that as well. So that'll, we, we uh, implemented our uh, ERP system with the SAP software. Big, big job. We got it done on time, on budget. That gives us a common database platform to operate the company across five islands. So now we can bring efficiencies. We can bring operational efficiencies. We're working with our union for the same goals. So Scott's, Scott's on path to deliver some of the things that the foundation was laid and now we're going to have to deliver more value to our customers. And the team is ready to do it. So, um, you know, we have a good bench. That's one of my proudest accomplishments, that we have a local developed executive team. Uh, it, not necessarily born here, but on the executive team, developed in Hawaii. Um, and so there's good succession in, in, the, in the company. Yeah, and I meant to ask you about this earlier. You know, throughout a good part of your career, you've been on foundations uh, providing value, providing uh, generosity to the community. And I guess you're going to continue to do that, and you're going to continue to, um, you know, urge the company to do it oh, yeah. and to provide, especially now, to provide uh, whatever it can provide for the right. benefit of the community. Tell me about your thoughts. Well, there's no urging necessary. I, this is one of the most giving cultures in Hawaii. Uh, when we have work projects with the community, we have to turn employees away. We have to do lotteries. Um, we match gifts. You know, we're very community-minded, and that's throughout the whole HEI family of companies. So there's really no urging needed. I think the direction's going to have to change now with the upcoming economic situation. Uh, so some of the projects we normally support may have to go by the wayside as we take care of what's really needed for the next year or two, I think. I'm honored to have you on the show, Alan. Alan Oshima. Well, thank you, Jay. President and CEO, just, just retired, now consultant for Hawaiian Electric. Um, in, in many ways, the face of Hawaiian Electric over all these years, the guy who really speaks its mind and its heart. Thank you so much, Alan. Thanks, Jay. Thanks for the white hair. <laughs> <laughs> Aloha. Aloha.